During the 1950s, Ruth Brown was one of America's leading R&B singers. She was so popular that many people actually joked R&B stood for Ruth and Brown. Ruth Weston was born on January 12, 1928 in Portsmouth, Virginia. Ruth's dad was the choir director at Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. She made her debut in the church choir at the age of four. Despite growing up in the church, Brown rebelled against church music and all formal musical training. She preferred the pop music she heard on the radio to the songs she sang at church. As a result, she refused to put the work in to learn to read music. In school, we had music classes, but I ducked them, Brown later recalled. They were just a little too slow. I didn't want to learn to read no note. I knew I could sing it. I woke up one morning and I could sing. Brown was a sneaky teenager. She told her parents that she was going to choir practice, but she actually snuck out to sing for soldiers at USO clubs. It was through her secret singing career that she met and fell in love with a sailor and trumpeter named Jimmy Brown. Knowing that her parents would disapprove of their relationship, not to mention her secret performances, Brown, when she was just 17, and her new boyfriend, ran away to Detroit, Michigan in 1945 with hopes of making it together as performers. They married shortly thereafter, but Brown would later discover that Jimmy was already married. Their marriage was legally void. While on paper, it appeared as if she was never married. By the time Brown learned her husband was still married to someone else, she had already developed a reputation using her married name so she kept the name Ruth Brown as a stage name for the rest of her life. In Detroit, Brown landed a gig singing at the Frolic Bar, and it was there that she was spotted by the famous band leader and talent scout Lucky Millinder, who recruited her as a vocalist for his orchestra. However, after a performance one night at a Washington, D.C. nightclub, Millinder spotted Brown carrying a tray of Cokes to her fellow band members, furious that his star singer would degrade herself, and by association him, by acting like a waitress, Millinder fired her on the spot and refused to give her a ride back to Detroit. Stranded in D.C., Brown had a chance encounter with Blanche Calloway, the sister of the famous band leader Cab Calloway and the owner of Crystal Caverns Nightclub. Calloway offered Brown a regular gig performing at her nightclub, and in 1948, a radio DJ saw Brown perform and recommended her to his friends at Atlantic Records. Brown signed a recording deal with Atlantic in October 1948, and the record label booked her a debut concert at the famous Apollo Theater in New York City. Sadly, while making the drive from Washington to New York City on the morning of her big show at the Apollo, Brown was involved in a bad accident in which she broke both of her legs. She spent the next 11 months recovering at a hospital in Pennsylvania. During that time, her supposed husband, Jimmy, left her because he thought she'd never walk again. Fortunately, Brown made a full recovery. In the spring of 1949, she finally recorded her first song for Atlantic, a blues ballad called So Long that proved an instant hit and cracked the top 10 on the R&B charts. Her next hit single, 1950's Teardrops From My Eyes reached number one on the R&B charts and stayed there for three months. After releasing the song, people started calling her the girl with a tear in her voice due to the sound of her voice on the track. 
Her most famous nickname, Miss Rhythm, was given to her by the pop star Frankie Lane after he heard her sing. Throughout the 1950s, Ruth Brown recorded a streak of hit R&B songs that built her reputation as a hit maker. Brown's records were so consistently popular that Atlantic Records was sometimes referred to as the house that Ruth built. That being said, Atlantic Records forced Brown to pay recording and touring expenses out of pocket, costs that nearly equaled her cut of the sales. By the early 1960s, the hits stopped coming, and Atlantic let her go. Brown had almost no money saved. She moved to Long Island, New York, where she picked up any job she could find, working as a teacher's aide, a school bus driver, and as a maid. It was a humbling shift for a woman who had been one of the nation's most popular singers just a few years earlier. Brown was married to a saxophonist named Earl Swanson for a short time during the mid-1950s, and in 1963, she married a police officer named Bill Blunt, but they also got divorced in 1966. I could pick a good song, but I sure couldn't pick a man, Brown wrote in her autobiography. Then, in 1975, Brown moved to Los Angeles to star in the musical Selma. The role proved the beginning of a miraculous comeback. From 79 to 80, she starred in Norman Lear's sitcom Hello Larry before returning to New York in the early 1980s to enjoy a successful run in several off-Broadway musicals. She played a leading role in the 1988 film version of Hairspray. The peak of Brown's comeback came in 1989 when she won a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical for her role in the Broadway production of Black and Blue, as well as a Grammy Award for her album Blues on Broadway. In addition to her renewed success as a performer, during the 1980s, Brown waged a relentless and ultimately successful campaign to reform the music industry's royalty system. Her efforts resulted in the creation of the Rhythm and Blues Foundation in Philadelphia in 1988 to help emerging as well as aging R&B musicians. The nonprofit was financed by a settlement with Atlantic Records. In hindsight, it is sadly ironic that they called Atlantic the house that Ruth built, but that it took a settlement with them to ultimately help her and other musicians like her that had built the industry, oftentimes on their own dime. Her two dozen hits put Atlantic on the map. She was both a diva and a fighter, a glamorous R&B singer and a tireless advocate for musicians' rights. In 1993, Brown was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She spent the rest of her life giving occasional tribute concerts and working with the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. On November 17, 2006, Brown died due to complications from a heart condition. She was 78 years old. One of the first great divas of modern American popular music. Her songs provided a blueprint for much of the rock and roll that followed in her wake. In addition to the musical legacy she left to the artists who came after her, Brown also left future artists a more artist-friendly environment thanks to her tireless work to reform the royalty system. Thanks for watching Jukebox Jams. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story about musical legends.